back for another edition of the Harness Spotlight. And also back is uh, Matt Rosen, as you could tell from his uh, pasty complexion. He must have been hiding in a cave somewhere. I've been around the whole time, just not in the sun, I guess. Uh, I must say it's a pleasure to uh, not be sitting next to you, but I am sitting uh, alongside you in spirit. And uh, we do have a couple of interesting uh, stakes races to talk about this weekend. Uh, one at Hoosier and one in Northfield. And uh, I'll hand the lines over to you and uh, you can get us started. Yeah, lots of great stakes action this weekend. Also, Tyogo on Sunday has some stakes action where Atlanta will take on Manchego. But we're going to focus first on Hoosier Park on Friday night. Race number 11 is the $330,000 Dan Patch. Nice field of nine here. And it's led by what's probably going to be a pretty heavy favorite in the four, Lather Up. Yeah, and I, I would say uh, a rather deserving heavy favorite in Lather Up. Uh, you see only nine horses, uh, so there's no trail all nine on the gate. Listen, lather up uh, would be would be a heavy favorite even if uh, he had the nine post. I don't think that would be much of a handicap from this spot. Um, listen, as long as he runs his race, which is uh, just faster than the rest of these currently, uh, there's no reason to think he wouldn't be able to go to the front, control the action at a very short price, uh, either just heading to the front or making two moves to the front. Uh, and it may just be all over from there at, uh, what, uh, you know, one to five or two to five or, or somewhere in that range. And uh, like I said, deservingly so. Why don't we uh, take a look at what one of his races looks like, and that is the Sam McKee Memorial, where he won last week at the Meadowlands. He's on the lead here. McWicked uh, came up to him, but uh, he kind of dispatched that one pretty easily. Yeah, you notice they were going at an uh, added distance here, and he set, uh, I believe, it was some sort of record. But you see a 146 and three for the mile, and he's just drawn away and drawn away from top-notch talent and drawing away from talent that he's going to face here. I mean, this is that's his second uh, uh, dominating front end effort uh, the last two at the Meadowlands uh, last three actually at the Meadowlands Hoosier Park uh, close close to the same configur configuration with the uh, two turn uh, track 7 eighths track not a mile track I, sell me on any reason why ladder up won't go wire to wire at, uh, at 2 to 5 I mean Listen, who do we try to beat him with it's nearly impossible to go against him in this spot if there were any kinks or any reasons why I could say maybe you can go against them. Uh, maybe one, he's traveling out to Indiana. Maybe he doesn't want to, maybe he doesn't enjoy the shipping or whatever. I was going to say, we, 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 I'm sure your number two is we've seen him misbehave before in the past. Not no, over the actually, larger tracks, we've seen him misbehave. And you know what? Actually, I wasn't going to say that misbehaving. Okay. I mean, most of the misbehaving has come at Pocono or on smaller tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a 7 8 track. I was going to say the other thing is, even though he's going really fast, you know, 25, 53, 120, he seems to be fine with those fractions. They're kind of like easy trips for him. No one's really come at him like really hard and like pushed him for a long way. That's the other thing. And you have some horses outside with always a prince who we've seen go some crazy fractions. He could leave. Filibuster Hanover could leave. Jimmy Frey could leave. Jimmy so Frey, there's yes. some horses in there that could push him a little. You know what? But it depends. If he goes, if he's too, sometimes if you go, if the pace is too slow, you invite pressure. Sometimes if you just roll along on the front end at a fast clip, it's impossible for horses to, to, to catch up to you if they're coming. And then you won't have that hard challenge. I'm kind of a, uh, I'm kind of in favor of letting them roll and not going too slow on the front end. So he might be in a position uh, where nobody gets near him. Uh, obviously, we didn't even mention Mick Wicked. Uh, we didn't even mention him, probably because you have to assume he'll be at a tactical disadvantage here, even from a good inside post. He may be looking at a first over trip. I'm in agreement with you. Always a prince is razor sharp. You have to use him, but that the the and you have to imagine Trace Teacher obviously knows his way around Hoosier Park. Is going to try to improve position off the gate. You have to. Jimmy Freight. Uh, listen, he's been racing. He's racing as good as as he has shown his whole career. He just hasn't had that great luck this year and hasn't really broken through. And this might, this might be another second best spot. Uh, I'm not thrilled with filibuster Hanover, but I can see him underneath. But uh, I guess I'm with you and chalking it up with a lather up. I do like Jimmy Freight underneath, maybe a cold exacta there. Round him out with, with a maybe tactical disadvantage, McWicked, and definitely always a prince. And I assume you're probably looking at something similar. Yeah, I'm a little nervous now because I love Jimmy Frey for second in this race. I just think this is the, the perfect spot for him. He really hasn't had much of a chance lately with outside posts and the Garrity and the Graduate. This looks like a spot where he could do it either way. He could try to gun to the lead along with Lather up, either maybe get to the front or sit the pocket, 
Or he could just wait for cover behind a horse like McWicked, who's probably going to be first up here. Uh, I just think this is a great spot for Jimmy Frey to finish second. I'd even give him a, a slight, slight, slight outside chance to win the race. I don't know if he could beat Lather up right now. He might be a little too sharp, but I, I give him a slight chance. I might play a small like box with him uh, on top as well. But uh, mm -hmm. to me, this is Lather up over Jimmy Frey. You know, always a prince. I think has a shot. I think Philip Bostahano has a shot. I'm tossing McWicked. Not that he can't finish second or third in this race. He certainly can, but I don't think the price is going to be right. I think we can get others in here right. to get second. He just hasn't been as sharp as last year. So hopefully uh, <laughs> it'll be a sink, sink or swim with us uh, pretty much uh, on board the same, uh, looking at the race the same way. And I agree. Jimmy Frey, well, he was he was excellent in the Garrity Saratoga. He just, he just had no chance. And if Scott Zeron, who's driving him, who's listed to drive now, can get him in a good position, he will be right there at the wire. So but well, that's lather up. One to five, uh, the Teagues, uh, Clyde Francis, <laughs> go get him, go get it, guys. Race eleven at Hoosier on Friday night. That's the Dan Patch, three hundred thirty thousand. We're going to move to Saturday night where we have Northfield Park, the four hundred thousand dollar Milstein Memorial. It's a really nice race as well, and I, and this really a, a much better betting race from some perspectives. If you don't like the favorites, there's a lot of ways you can go here. I mean, I could see. Captain Victorious, Century Pharaoh, Better His Wish, Working on a Mystery South. I mean, there's five or six horses you can legitimately say, hey, this horse can win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do agree with the morning line of Better's Wish as the morning line favorite. That probably deserves to be the favorite in the spot. It's a decent enough draw. You know I've been on his bandwagon all, all year. I love the horse. I'm going to, I don't want to use the phrase chalk it up here, but he's going to be my top selection. I don't see any reason why he, he doesn't bring his usual 110% and, and from this post uh, can get the job done. But you mentioned, yeah, you have Southwind Ozzy, the, the Adios winner. It was just, I think po post eight might just, on, uh, post eight on a half mile track, especially North, I just think that kills him. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, because this horse has been a nice story, obviously. Uh, dominating winner in the Adios at the Meadows, but yeah, post eight is, 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 is horrible. Uh, working on a mystery with uh, Tim Tietrich driving, and we know we know he can handle uh, uh, driving around a half mile track. Uh, I've seen him uh, growing up in Chicago area, Maywood Park. Uh, bounced back with a nice qualifier, and you know he was right there in the Meadowlands pace uh, along with Better's Wish. And uh, Century Farrow, interesting three year old uh, who's razor sharp, looking uh, for if I can read this right, uh, his ninth win in ten starts this season is already. Uh, 12 for 19 in his career, interesting three-year-old to kind of spice up the race. And you have the buck guy, Dave Miller, on the bike, which makes things a lot more interesting also. So I already kind of gave it away. I'm going with Better's Wish. Uh, where are you headed? Well, your top pick, Better's Wish, actually raced last week in the Cane Pace and lost. And we're going to take a look at that uh, defeat before we move on to my selection here. And uh, the horse that's coming at him is Captain Crutch on the outside. And Better's Wish raced well. He just maybe wasn't the best horse on this deck. Yeah, but uh, the horse he got beat by is uh, kind of Captain Crunches may be considered the quote best horse. Uh, so there, uh, there's certainly no shame in losing this race, uh, considering the the quality of the horse that beat him. Uh, should he have won? Could he have won? Uh, maybe. Uh, I guess you could have that uh, debate. I'm sure. You know what? If they ran that race ten times, uh, maybe they each win five times. Who knows? I'm not going to hold that against him. Um, and obviously, we don't have Captain Crunch in this race. So, who do you have? Well, what, what I want to ask you first is, how do you, what kind of trip do you think you're going to get with Better's Wish here? You got Captain Victorious to his inside, super fast off the gate. He's got the rail. He's got Yannick. You know he's leaving. The two, Century Pharaoh. He hasn't necessarily proven on a half mile track, but leaves you know, most of his weeks at Woodbine. What kind of trip do you think you're getting with Better's I think Wish? he's leaving. I don't see any reason why Dexter Dunn's just going to not float, you know, going to float from the gate and get away like fourth or fifth. Yeah, Captain Victorious has a ton of speed, but he will, I, I, I he will be yield, he has to be yielding in the spot to somebody at some point. And whether that's Better's Wish or maybe working on a mystery, I don't see Captain Victorious on the lead, let's say, uh, once they emerge like off the first turn or going to the quarter. You have to assume working on a mystery is leaving the gates. Uh, he does his best work on near the front end. I see Dexter Dunn being very aggressive here. I see him pushing on. Maybe he gets looped and just get, drives on. I don't see him getting parked. Uh, I see him hitting the front at some point. Maybe they're sitting 3-5 with the Better's Wish working on the mystery second. If, they, if he gets looped, drive on to do like a give and go or something like that. Like I said, I do see Yannick Jingra yielding with Captain Victorious after trying to protect the position as best he can. 
I don't know where Brian Sears is going to be with Southwind Ozzy. Like I said, you got to be forwardly placed off the gates. Uh, I mean, he, he very well may get away eighth and just have no chance, like I said. Century Farrow, interesting, three-year-old. He's the horse I think you might end up seeing pulling early and being first up in that spot, which uh, it doesn't really thrill me all that much, especially Better's Wish and or Work on a Mystery, one of the two uh, uh, more established three-year-olds, I guess you could say. Hit the front end. I don't know if I want him first up, but uh, I'm looking for an aggressive drive from Dexter Dunn, a give and go, or at some point controlling the action. And if, if he makes the front and he's not you know completely tortured, uh, I see him. I see him coming ahead on top. I really do. I'm torn here between two horses, and it's really going to play down to what the tote board says as to who I end up going with. I'm torn between Captain Victorious and South Ozzy. and I know you've mentioned them both already. Uh, for me, Captain Victorious, I, I think he is going to gun away from the gate. I think at worst case scenario, he's going to be sitting in the pocket here. And to me, that's a great situation for this horse. You know, things haven't gone his way in the finals, but he's done very well in the eliminations. He's already proven he could put up a, a big mile. I think he has the speed to work out the trip he needs. I think he's going to be in great position. So I like Captain Victorious. South Manazi, I just think he's a really good horse. And he is. I, I do, he is stuck in post eight, but I don't think post eight is going to be as big of a deal at Northfield as it might be, at, let's say, Yonkers. You know, I think Sears can probably float away in this spot or leave a little bit, get in decent position. And if he has to go park the whole way, I think this is a horse that might be good enough to do it. I really do. He's going to need a little bit of help on the front, you know, between Better's Wish, Captain Victorious, who are working on the mystery if he goes. He's going to need a little help as far as the pace goes. But if the pace is right, I think he can get the job done. So it's really, I'm going to come down to price. If if Captain Victorious is the longer price, I'm going to go with him. And if South Manazi is the longer price, I'm going to go with him. Maybe I'll use them both in uh, some sort of trifecta or superfecta okay. or something like that. I think they'll both be double digits, Captain Victorious, just because people will be skeptical. and They might, they might not trust him coming off that effort in the audios where he stopped pretty badly. Uh, you have to assume he's fit and ready to go. I assume Ron Burke we wouldn't be uh, accepting the invite and racing him if he wasn't 100% uh, ready. But you might get double digits, and I think you'll definitely get double digits on South Wind Ozzy. Just, uh, I don't want to say definitely. Let me let me take that back. Not definitely. Possibly get double digits just because of the eight hole. Listen, if South Wind Ozzy had the three hole and Betters Wish had the eight hole, you know we'd be talking for twice as long about South Wind Ozzy. But I'm going with Betters Wish. Um, I'm going to use Working on the Mystery second. I'm not using. I maybe I'll use South Wind Ozzy in the fourth spot. I don't. I I, I just don't feel he gets close enough. Uh, so I'm hoping for not a ridiculously over bet betters wish, but uh, that's where I'm headed. I, so I see no reason to jump off the bandwagon. I feel like I've said that six or seven times already this year, but betters wish it is for me. Well, if you're right and I'm getting those odds, I'll probably pay a triple one eight with one two three eight with one two three five eight using working on the mystery only for third. I just think he's going to need a start. Um, okay. Northfield Park. $400,000, race number 10, Saturday night. It's a great night of racing there with a couple other uh, nice uh, stakes races and the Ohio Sire stakes. Uh, be sure to check that out. Check out Hoosier Park on Friday, Tiger Downs on Sunday. That's the Harness Spotlight. Good luck.